So we thank him for the cross. We thank him for the price he paid. Bearing all our sin and shame, in love he came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you. 
you for the price you again thank you for the cross yes God we thank you we thank you for the name pierce bearing all sin and shame in love you came and gave amazing free we thank you thank you for this love
Hallelujah. We praise you, great God. We praise you for who you are and for whose we are. Hallelujah. 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 We praise you, God. Thank you, Jesus. We invite our secretary, Sister Yolande, to come and make us welcome, even as we are welcoming God's spirit among us. Thank you, Deacon Joseph. Worthy is the Lamb. Indeed, worthy is the Lamb. Good morning, Boulevard family. On behalf of the pastor and deacons of the church, I would like to extend a warm and special welcome to all persons worshiping with us this morning. We'd like to especially highlight any first-time visitors worshiping with us. If you are visiting with us for the very first time, please stand that we may welcome you in the boulevard fashion. Any first time visitors? No. Pardon me? Oh, okay. Welcome to Boulevard Baptist Church. We're gonna sing our welcome song for you. My brother, welcome my sister. It is our prayer that you will have a meaningful encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ and the members of the Boulevard Baptist Church today. Refreshments will be available in the Luther Gibbs Education Center at the end of the service. Enjoy the service and do come again. As members, we are encouraged to bring a friend, a neighbor, or relative to church each Sunday so that they too can be blessed. I will now invite our beloved pastor, the Reverend Dr. Devon Dick, to greet you and share with you his welcome and announcements. Reverend Dick. Good morning, sisters and brothers. God is good all the time. God is a good God. He provides for us according to his riches in glory. God is a great God, creating this universe, this earth, with all its provisions and possibilities so that we can experience the full life, the abundant life, a quality eternal life. As we celebrate the third Sunday of Lent, let us remember that God revealed himself in Jesus the Christ. It means, therefore, that wherever there is suffering, Jesus is. He was touched by infirmities and suffering. It's not the other way around that when we are in Christ, there is no suffering. But wherever suffering is, however we are suffering, God in Christ is with us. This month, we emphasize the Sunday school. And let us say together the memory verse on the back of your program from John chapter 12. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We know that by heart, eh? Let us not look on the paper as we say. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Sunday school has been described as the cradle of the church. 
And many of us came to make a decision for Christ through the Sunday school. We encourage our parents to take the children to Sunday school. The attendance of children, beginners, younger children, has fallen off. We ask you to take, if you can't take them, at least send them. It is important from a young age, and we know that from research done, that before they are six, we need to instill certain wholesome values. So again, we encourage. Please note that next Sunday is High Attendance Sunday. So if we don't normally even come to Sunday school or take our children, make a special effort next Sunday. Our Secretary Yulan will tell you about the opportunities to worship God and engage in his ministry. She will tell you about the Divorced Papers, a play in which Oliver Samuels is in it. Yes, there are laughs in it, but it's a play in which serious issues are discussed. And I would encourage you to view that play, Divorce Papers. On the fourth Sunday, there will be a musical drama, a slight change to what we are accustomed to in Evangelism Month. It is an adaptation, adapted by Deacon Joseph, and we encourage you not only to come as an individual, but if you come as a group, you get group discount. So if you have five of you, five adults, that would cost how much? 1,200, that would cost how much? 6,000. All right, but if you buy the group rate before the date, it will cost you 5,000. Okay, you're aware of that. We are delighted that we have worshiping with us the son of Sister Wilson Bishop Michael Wilson. Michael is the regional overseer for the Church of God of Prophecy in the United Kingdom and France, and he's based in Birmingham. Michael, could you please stand? He came for the funeral service of our brother, late brother, giant within the faith, Howard Holdsworth. I'm, look, it's, I'm looking to see Roddy is here and his family. Roddy, you're here. Could you stand? Not here. And yesterday, as you know, Brother Holdsworth's funeral was on Friday. Yesterday, Brother Sidney McLennan. Sister Lori here. Yes. Please continue. Sister Lori McLennan. Welcome. We commend her prayers, continued prayers, and the family, the children, a very difficult time in their lives. We are extremely delighted that we had we have two first time visitors and we pray that as you worship, with, worship God with us, that it will be a meaningful experience. On good, and if you're not a member of a church, and you're looking at church home, we'll be happy to have you. You can join us through baptism. We have baptism on Good Friday. 
You can join us via transfer. You can join us by restoration. We'll be very happy if God has placed it in your heart that you'll join us to work together for God's glory and honor. Please continue members to invite persons to church and especially during April or Evangelism Month. Set our target that we're going to invite at least three persons. Will you stand as we share the peace? The peace of the Lord be with you. Please share the peace with someone. Thank our musicians for that musical offering. Now invite Sister Yuland to tell us about the opportunities to worship God and engage in God's ministry. Thank you, Reverend Dick. Worship continues this evening at 6.30 p.m. with evening service and group three is in charge. March, as you've heard, since last, since the beginning of the month, is Sunday School Emphasis Month. And in a couple days, March 15th, is High Attendance Sunday. Everyone is asked to come out and bring, bring themselves and children to Sunday School on March the 15th. High Attendance Sunday. There'll be prizes and surprises. <laughs> okay. The Kingston and St. Andrew Baptist Association invites you to a forum on Sunday, March 14, 2015, beginning at 9.30 a.m. here at the Boulevard Baptist Church. The guest speaker will be the Honorable Peter Bunting, Minister of National Security and Justice. His address will center on the new crime initiative, Unite for Change. Please come out and support this event. On Sunday, March the 22nd, 2015 at 4 p.m., the Women's Federation will be celebrating their anniversary. The guest speaker will be the Reverend Tanisha McFarlane, pastor of the New Haven Baptist Church. All are invited. As our pastor mentioned earlier, April is Evangelism Month, and a whole month of activities have been planned under the theme, Moving Forward with Jesus in Faith. The speakers include our own pastor, the Reverend Dr. Devon Dick, Reverend Carl Johnson, Reverend Stephen Smith,
Bishop Joseph Prasad from Guyana and Sergeant Coleridge Minto. One of the highlights of the month, as he mentioned earlier, is the musical drama Flight Rapture. Tickets are available now from members of the choir and the cost is 1,002 for adults and 600 for children. I know we all like to laugh and Oliver Samuels is good for a laugh. So on April 9th, do not miss Divorce Papers, April 9th, 2015 at 8.30 p.m. And tickets are only $1,500 and available from the church office, Deacon Winter and myself. We ask that you remember and pray for Sister Jacqueline Smith of Loop 4, who is in the Kingston Public Hospital on the Luke Ward. And also for Deacon Veronica Beckford of Group 5, who is recuperating at home. Congratulations are in order to Sister Lorna Wilson Morgan of Group 9, who was awarded her PhD from the Walden University on March 3. Could you stand, Sister Morgan? She doesn't seem to be here, but congratulations. Please extend congratulations to her, Stacy. Thank you. Finally, there are ways for you to stay connected with what's going on at Boulevard Baptist Church. Visit our website at www.boulevardbaptist.org.jm or email us at boulevard.baptist at yahoo.com or visit and like our Facebook page. And of course, read your weekly bulletin. Our ushers are standing by to receive your tithes and offerings. Give as the Lord has prospered you. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. Have a blessed week. Let us hear the word of God as it comes to us from Malachi chapter 3, verse 18. That, and you will again see, uh, I'm sorry. Okay, I missed the scripture. Anyway, it talks about bringing your gifts into the house of the Lord so that it can be used to enhance and to cause others to come into the fellowship. So as we give our gifts, we are going to remember those who are less fortunate, those who are not able to give, those who are not working. So those of us who have to give it, let us give it out of a heart of love for the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Eternal God and our Heavenly Father, we Thank you this morning for bringing us into your house. As we come this morning, God, to give our gifts, that which you have blessed us, we pray, God Almighty, that we will give it with a cheerful heart, that as we give our gifts, Lord, we will give our lives afresh so that you might use the gifts that we bring to enhance your kingdom, so that as we give our lives to you afresh this morning, God, hearts will be truly warmed. That as we walk on the streets, people will know that we have met you. So hear the cries now, God. Bless the gifts and use both gifts and givers to your honor and to your glory. Amen.
to thank the musicians for that piece. We now call the children, nine years and under, to come to the altar. As they come, we will sing. <laughs> Every Sunday school should grow. Okay, some of all this morning my lines are crossed. But nevertheless, this, the devil will not overcome me. The children, young children will now and come and perform for us. We'll have the children nine years and under come to the altar for prayer, and as they come, we'll sing every Sunday school should grow. So you sing as you come along. are lost in sin and woe, longing the better life to know. Tell them of Christ who loves them so, every Sunday school should grow. Every Sunday school should grow. Every Sunday school should grow. Tell it o'er and o'er where'er you go. Every Sunday school should grow. Great multitudes adrift unsought, now unenlisted, now untaught. How can you bear to let them go? Every Sunday school should grow. Every Sunday school should grow. Every Sunday school should grow. Tell it o'er and o'er wherever you go. Every Sunday school should grow. Good morning, boys and girls. How are you this morning? I am blessed, and I'm giving God thanks for you as you come to Sunday school. The song says, every Sunday school should grow. How do you think your Sunday school will grow? Okay. 
very good. One says caring for one another. The other says by carrying others into the fellowship. So I'm going to give you a task this morning that each of you are going to carry one more child to Sunday school for next week. Hmm? One more child so that they too can come and hear the word of God. Can you do that for me? Yeah. All right. So next week when you come with that new person, I will be at the back before Sunday school. I'm going to be standing at the door and you're going to bring your new person and show me. And anybody who brings a new person will receive a little token. All right? So I'm encouraging you this morning to bring somebody so that you can receive a token. All right? Let us pray. All eyes closed. Obedience is the key. Close your eyes. Father in heaven, this morning we pray for your covering upon these, your children. Lord, we pray for your divine protection over them. And we pray that as they go from day to day, Lord, no ill will befall them. We bring all children across this nation and the world to you, God, because there is an attack on children. But we come against it in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord God Almighty, that you will unify the children. Let them, Almighty God, stand up, Almighty God, together. God, teach them to love each other. Even those, Almighty God, who are not loving. Because their motto in school is peace and love. So let the peace begin with our children. As so as they go out to school, that the peace that they pass is on, others will catch a vision. So protect them even now, God. Seal them for your kingdom and continue to direct their path. Bless those who will teach them today. We give it all to you in Jesus' name. Amen. So you're going to go to Sunday school quietly. No running. And you're going to sing. Every Sunday school should grow. And remember that you are to take somebody with you tomorrow, next week Sunday. We sing the last verse. Look on the harvest field so white. Soon comes the darkness of the night. Calling the name of Jesus, go. Every Sunday school should grow. Should grow. Every Sunday school should grow. Tell it o'er and o'er wherever you go. Every Sunday school should grow. We are at that place in our worship experience when we seek now to hear from God. He will speak to us through the responsive psalm, Psalm 8. Let us all stand as we read. We read alternately. We continue to stand for the gospel acclamation at the end of the psalm. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. All flocks and herds and the beasts of the field together, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, all that swim the paths of the sea, O Lord, O Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth, the word of the Lord.
according to Luke 5, verses 27 to 32. And I'm reading from the New International Version. After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Levi sitting at his tax booth. Follow me, Jesus said to him. And Levi got up, every, and Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. Then Levi held a great banquet for Jesus at his house, and a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with them. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, who belonged to their sect, complained of his disciples. Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. 32 and ending, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Here endeth the reading. Sometimes we wonder how the crowds lining the streets could have so misunderstood who Jesus really was and what he came to do. And yet, how often we have called him a kings of kings and lord of lords without truly stopping to consider what that means. He wears the crown of love and the crown of life. He is both the dying lamb and the living redeemer the risen Savior and the King of heaven. Today, we crown him with many crowns, for he is the only one worthy of them all.
Almighty God. We thank you for speaking to us through songs, through the scriptures, through sharing of the peace, through the prayers and supplications. Continue to speak to us, Lord, through the interpretation of your word. This we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Came for the walking wounded, not the well. Jesus answered them, Luke chapter 5, verse 31. It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. Yesterday's newspapers revealed that 14-year-old Miss Simpson was four months pregnant when she was chopped and killed. Some relatives of this Donald Quarry student claimed that they knew that big men were having sexual relationships with this girl, but they did nothing. What happened at Newlands Yalas St. Thomas occurred, a similar thing occurred in Westmoreland, when Westmoreland businessman 37-year-old Cornelius Robinson was sentenced for the murder of 14-year-old schoolgirl Santaya Campbell. Robinson pled guilty. He was the one who had impregnated her. And as you know, on January 27, Santoya's body was found in a garbage bag under a bridge close to Frome Technical High School, where she was a grade eight student. Post-mortem res results show that the young student was pregnant. So from Negril Point, Westmoreland, to Moran Point, Yala St. Thomas, in a short time, young girls who, are, who were pregnant were murdered. Brothers and sisters in Christ, these and other things are signs that people seek. Them head take them. The community members and relatives seek and the society sick. And it is in this sickness that Jesus, Jesus' words come to us when he said, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. Jesus, as we know and would say, is the answer. And People need Jesus. Communities and the society need Jesus. And Jesus in saying it is not the healthy who need a doctor but the sick was not primarily talking about cancer and diabetes and hypertension. It is about sin sick souls. Jesus comes to help the sin sick soul. He comes to help those who are weak in the Christian faith. The Christians who are overwhelmed under temptations, tests, and trials. And Jesus empowers Christians in order to deal with these tragedies, difficulties, and disappointments. He provides sufficient grace to handle what is happening. Because he is the one through grace who said to the publicans and tax collectors and chief sinners, come and experience pardon. Come repent and experience pardon. The Lord 
He's always training his people for the trials of the time. All three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, repeat these words. It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick, with different variations. It was evidently a favorite passage for all three Gospel writers and their readers and hearers. There are a couple of stories in the Bible that are significant, but they're not in all three Gospels. You know, the one about being the light of the world. It's not in all three. And isn't it Luke alone who has the story of the Good Samaritan? So when you see a particular verse in all three, it is significant. You will find, friends, that there are a couple of stories that are in all three synoptic gospels. The miracles of Jesus, the events leading up to his death and resurrection, yeah, the passion of Jesus. These things are there, and that this verse is in all three gospels. It is very important. It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. Those who are in good health, who are free from all diseases, wounds, bruises, and sores, they don't need doctor or surgeon. But those who are not well, they have to go to the doctor. We need a checkup. We need to get a good sound so that we can get healing. But as you are aware, this passage is not primarily talking at the physical level. But it's talking about those who have the deadly disease of sin, who are born in a sinful environment, who are, have unclean lips and are in need of Jesus, the great physician, who can cure all maladies of the soul. He came for those who are sick with sin, he came for those who are sick of sinning and those who are desirous of experiencing healing. It's not, can I help those who are self-righteous, holier than thou, the scribe and the Pharisees. He came for the walking wounded, those who are hurting based upon our sins or being sinned against. And this morning, I would like for us in to, to look at three things. One, people who are hurting. People who are hurting can be described as being dysfunctional. A dysfunctional person is a person who is in conflict or has been neglected, or has been abused as part of their growing up process. It is not just sporadic, but it is a continual, regular feature of their upbringing that they were abused or neglected. And after a while, these persons believe that it is a normal arrangement. It's not wrong. There are some persons who don't even know the difference between right and wrong, you know. Because of the way they were brought up, the way they were schooled, they were they abused and neglected. Look at Bobby Brown, daughter of Whitney Houston. Here is this young lady who from very young age, tender age, they say that she was witnessing her parents and friends 
and relatives using cocaine and heroin. She saw it around her. What do you expect? The chances are she feels that this is normal. When you can't manage a situation, take a little heroin or a little cocaine to just deal with the matter. When we might have a headache, we'll take Fenzik. Because that's how we were brought up. She have a headache, she probably want to take cocaine. And you have to understand that there are persons who are growing up like that, dysfunctional. And people, friends, we have a dysfunctional society. When we are hurting and killing women and children. It is said, friends, that even the dangerous mafia of Italy had a code of conduct that they would not hurt women or children. Read the historical records concerning the protests of 1831 and 1865. Even when the protesters, the enslaved, the peasants were attacked and they were defending themselves, they had this policy that they would still not hurt any women or children. And it didn't happen. I think there's a, there's a law in Jamaica that we don't hang women no matter what crime they did. When we were growing up, we were taught that we must defend the honor of our mothers. The worst thing anybody could say is something about our mothers. Say anything about the father. But don't touch the mother. Take step with us, but don't touch our mothers. That is how we were socialized. Mothers having a role of nurturing and caring, bringing us into the world after a regular nine months pregnancy. So we would defend mothers. How on what is happening now in our society? When people are thinking it nothing to kill mothers, young girls, innocent children. What is happening? It is a sick, dysfunctional society. And the persons who identify with that and think that that is normal. Our underage girls are being raped, sexually exploited and pimped, and no action, dysfunctionality. You know, sometimes we feel that Christians can be dysfunctional. That once they accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, that, that's the end. But I know of a minister of religion, and he was molested as a child by a priest. And even after he got married, he was a wreck sexually. There are persons who are walking wounded because of child abuse, sexual abuse. Some are dysfunctional because their fathers denied them. They had to beg their fathers for lunch money and school fees. Some are hurting because they were told that, are, and those who are foreigners, you might not understand this term, they were told that they are a jacket. It is not a comforting thought for some family member to tell you that you are a jacket. Some are hurting because they were told that they would come to no good, dysfunctional. And there are persons who are walking wounded with hurts, who have never told certain, told anyone the hurt. They are living with family secrets that they will carry to the grave. They are suffering in silence because of fear of embarrassment, exclusion and harm, even death. Walking wounded, dysfunctional persons. These persons might be educated, doing well on the job professionally, but when it comes to emotional intelligence, 
the award. They are brilliant in a particular field, but a brute on the personal level. Dysfunctionality, walking wounded. No else is this walking wooden displayed. How else is the hurt displayed? You see disruptive behavior. They are troublemakers, troublesome, unruly. They are rowdy, disorderly, attention seeking, while they are walking time bomb, just ready to explode at any moment. Yes, disruptive. Living carelessly and living conceited lives. And sometimes these persons are disruptive because of mistakes made in life. They are hurt because of an abortion at an early age. They are to steal to make two ends meet. They abandon a child. They trick people into getting sexual favors. They fail at marriage and they blame themselves. They have problem children and they blame themselves. They become disruptive, walking wounded. They are hurting. And spiritually, we are hurting because we remember once when we were on fire for the Lord, but now we are cold or at best lukewarm. We are hurting and disruptive because we have allowed the cares of life to take hold of our spirituality and God is no longer priority. We even try a little obia now and then to see if something will work. I know some people will tell you that when you have worries, you must wear tight shoes. Because when you have on tight shoes, you won't remember the problem. But that is not really a solution, you know, friends. In fact, you really have two problems now. You have a tight shoes problem and you still have the same problem. So you're still hurting and dysfunctional and disruptive. Some are depressed, walking wounded. Depression is a state of mind in which the person is seeing things negatively. They have negative expectations, negative outcomes. They expect the worst of people and situations. In other words, there's a lack of hope in the future. Negative, negative, evil will triumph over good. And they are down and they engage in self-pity and they are cynical and they are frustrated. And even brilliant people, depression occurs. Recently I saw this. documentary on Brian Lara. Brian Lara was talking of records, 375, 500, or 501, not out. And you know what he said? When he was playing county cricket, he said, after a while, playing county cricket, scoring all his runs, six days a week, playing cricket. He said, it got to him. It just got to him. And he went down. You remember, was it Elijah under that tree when Jezebel was after him? He wanted the Lord to take his life. He was down and out. It got to him, depressed, walking, wounded, hurting. And the angels had to feed him. Yes, many walking, wounded friends. Yesterday, A Christian leader, Christian businessman, and was telling us, that is Deacon Horton. He told Deacon Horton and me that at his workplace, the worst people to deal with are the Christians. And I could give you the example of what he told us, but... I won't share it because sometimes somebody knows somebody and will identify who we're talking about. But he's not the first person to say that, you know. 
He's not the first person to say that. And I think that what we don't understand is that sometimes some of the Christians are walking wounded based on how they were brought up, the dysfunctional experiences, things happen to them. Some is because of past mistakes. Some down and depressed, walking wounded, hurt. And every life is characterized by a measure of vulnerability, fear, discouragement, and depression. Walking wounded. So we are dysfunctional, we are disruptive, and depressed. Well, what is the good news? Help is on the way. Jesus came for the walking wounded, for the dysfunctional, the disruptive, and the depressed. He's here to help the hurting. We must be part of the solution to help people and to seek help. There are persons who, as you know, they offer to help, but they're only helping themselves. They delight in knowing that somebody worse than them, and then they talk your business. Some delight in knowing that you are dependent upon them for advice and resources. They really love themselves. It is all about what they can get out of it, or they can promote themselves and look good. I don't know if you noticed, you ever go to a funeral service yet? And somebody come up and they're supposed to be giving a tribute to the deceased. And they talk more about themselves than the deceased. It is their moment, their time. Countries do that too. Sometimes a country will give you, a, give you aid. But what they give you with one hand, they take it with the other. The aid helps them because of the strings attached. And sometimes that's how people do, you know, when they give you a little help, the strings that are attached to that help is not real help at all. It's all about me, myself, and I. Oscar Wilde, this Irish poet, said in the, 19, in the 1880s, some cause happiness wherever they go. Others whenever they go. Be careful who you seek help from. Some people are not going to help you. But they see the back of them. But we thank God that when you look at the rest of Luke chapter 5, Jesus was always helping. He is the one who calmed the sea when the disciples were nervous. Jesus fed the 5,000 when the people were hungry. Jesus helped confront the demons and set the demoniac free. Jesus healed the leper so that he could be reintegrated into society. Yes, friends, we must help. And Jesus is the model. We must help through our care basket, the less fortunate, through our soup kitchen, because we know that empty bag can't stand up. Help others to keep the Christian faith and persevere to the end. Yes, help, help. Help those who are depressed. Help those who are dysfunctional. Help those who are disruptive, divisive, and disgraceful. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Snatch them in pity from sin and the grave. Weep over the erring one. Lift up the fallen. Tell them of Jesus, the mighty to save. There are many opportunities, friends. We are seeing persons who are walking wounded. And we must be moved with compassion. These people should get priority treatment. They must be placed in the emergency section. This help should be personal. It should be warm. Persons should feel special because of the manner in which the help was offered. It should be affectionate. It should be compassionate. Compassion moves us to do something about the suffering, the pain, and the grief, the injustice and the exploitation. Discern the hurt. Diagnose the problem 
and prescribe the remedy. Yes, there are many persons, friends, who in this society and in our communities who have no family support, no family to turn to, no family to look to. And we must be good listeners. Just listen. Sometimes all we have to do is listen. Sometimes we just off our shoulder, say, lean on me when you're not strong. I'm here for you. And then we say, and feel fulfilled that we can say, if I can help somebody as I travel along, then my living will not be in vain. The helping community, friends, we are called upon to experience healing as well as being facilitators of healing. In all of this, the presence and the role of the helping community is pivotal. We must mirror the wholeness of the healed life, being a ministering agent in a broken, wounded, and hurting community. And how will this work out? Is the quality of wholeness the helping community displays becomes the pattern on of wholeness to which it witnesses in word and deed. The helping community becomes the place where barriers and divisions that exclude and marginalize persons are broken down. Therefore, we ought to affirm the humanity of persons rather than defining them based on their sexual practices or propensities. We must be concerned about the teenagers who are driven from their homes because of their sexual orientation or their sexual practices. Everybody is somebody. So we are concerned about all children. No matter what they have done, if they are homeless in New Kingston or anywhere, it is of concern to us. These are persons who are hurting. Some are dysfunctional. Some are disruptive. Some are depressed. But the helping community must extend a helping hand to all. And what is it we are doing when we extend this helping hand? Finally, it is healing. That is what Jesus said. I have come for the sick, not the well. The wounded, not the well. It is good for us to see church like a hospital. It is for people who are not well. Too often, when people are not well spiritually, they, they hide away from church. They don't want to come to church. It should be the other way around. If we're well and hearty and doing all right, you can you don't have to come. But when we have issues, problems, tests, temptations, trials, troubles, come. Jesus calls us, come just as I am. Come. It's just come to experience healing, to be whole again, to be better again, to have peace with God, with ourselves and with others. It is when mind and body and spirit are in sync. Healing is God's will and purpose for us. Jesus the Messiah offers healing which includes and involves the physical cure of individuals affected by disease, disability, and mental disorder. But in the ministry of Jesus, healing was clearly more than physical. Healing had other dimensions which are deeper and wider than physical cure. This has been the witness of Jesus, the greatest of all healers. From Jesus we learn that healing has to do with wholeness. This wholeness is absolutely comprehensive. Persons went to Jesus or were taken to Jesus for healing of a physical nature. But what did Jesus do? 
What did Jesus do? He said, your sins are forgiven. Mark chapter 2 verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven. He knew that the real need that the man had was primary to experience forgiveness of sins. Guilt removed. The forgiveness of sins is a dimension of human wellness. Anytime we carry around that baggage, that guilt upon our shoulder and our lives, it, we, it has the potential to make us dysfunctional, disruptive, and depressed. Need healing, forgiveness of sins. Tony Allen, theologian and psychiatrist, states that forgiveness heals the spirit, which is demonstrated by healing of psychosomatics, stress-related lifestyle disorders. Look at John chapter 5, verse 14, what it says. Afterwards, Jesus findeth him. This man was an invalid, impotent man in the temple, and he said unto him, Behold, thou art whole, sin no more. Lest a worse thing come upon you. Healing is more than physical cure. It has to do with wholeness, spiritual well-being. When a person has been healed and is assured that he or she has been made well or whole, it means also that the person has been saved. What is it we mean when we talk about we are saved? What is it we are talking about when you say about salvation? Look at Matthew chapter 9, verse 20 to 22. You remember that story of the woman? Woman who was diseased with an issue of blood for 12 years. And she came behind Jesus and touched him, the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, if I may touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned when he saw her. He said, daughter. Be of good comfort, thy faith, thy faith has made thee whole. Salvation came to her, and salvation is a sign that the powers of domination no longer have capacity to hold people down, to oppress and burden people. The dysfunctionality can be removed. The disruptiveness can be removed. The depression can be gone. Jesus offers full healing. Luke verse, chapter 17 from verse 12 states, And when Jesus entered into a certain village, they met ten persons with, and they were lepers. They stood afar off. They lifted their voices to Jesus and said, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourself unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Jesus sent the ten lepers to go and show themselves to the religious authorities so that they can be reintegrated into society. They don't have to live outside on the margins. They can be part of society again. Healing has socio-religious implications for the sufferer. Healing also, friends, has to do with social ills. If individual sickness is seen as a product, sometimes of the sinful, sick environment, then we must look at factors in our society that preventing people from living in full. Sometimes poverty, oppression, homelessness, loneliness, social rejection, are problems why people are dysfunctional and disruptive and depressed. Healing confronts social ills. Healing friends will confront the murder of our teenagers, the sexual abuse of our teenagers, the killing of our mothers, 
the society needs healing. And we who have experienced healing, and even as we are healing or experiencing healing, we still must offer healing to people and to the society. I leave, I leave one last aspect of healing, friends. It also has to do with the environment, you know. Physical, mental, spiritual, social, the environment. That is why we are part of the carbon fast. Because we know we must care for the environment. Because it's the environment that is caring for us. So if we destroy the environment, what is going to happen to us is going to affect us. And some of us, we get so used to the polluted environment. We live in Kingston and we see the smoke. And we're just used to it. Friends, you ever pass certain places, I'm not going to call it identify, you ever pass certain places and the place don't smell so good because of probably it's a chicken farm or a pigsty? And you ever wonder how the people them live in it? They're used to it. It's because we coming from outside, oh, it feels different. And if we are not careful, friends, we get used to sin. We're used to the dysfunctionality, the disruptiveness, and the depression, and we don't want to do anything. We are called upon to experience healing and to offer healing. Yes, healing has to do with the physical, the biological aspect. It has to do with the mental and the psychological. How we think and feel. And it has to do with the spiritual. Meaning and purpose in life. Who am I? How do I, how do I get here and where am I going? Some of us, we just want one third healing. We don't want the full healing. Dealing with the physical, the psychological and the spiritual. One third can't work, friends. One third can only work with a singing group. That's a nice name for a group. But if you have a one-third minister, it can't work. If you only get one-third of the healing, we need to get the full healing. Healing involves restoration, wellness of the whole being, reconciliation with God, self, and others, and the whole creation. Healing brings together the spiritual, the moral, the social, the political, economic and environmental. Christ Jesus took upon himself the infirmities of human life and brought about salvation, which is wholeness of life, healing. And how do we start that process? We have to have faith in God. We have to exercise faith in God as revealing Jesus the Christ. How are we coping with life, friends? The challenges of life. Whether it's our weakness or people doing things to us. How do walking wounded people get well? If we are not having Jesus as our savior, we are like a man in a plane. You're jumping off the plane in the air without a parachute. You know what is going to happen? Crash. Disaster. And that is what we are seeing in a sick, sick, sin sick society and individuals and community. We have neglected Jesus. We have turned our backs against Jesus. And it is time, friends, to exercise faith, wholehearted faith and belief in God's way, God's will, and God's wisdom. Trust God. He is the one who can forgive us of our sins, make us whole again, experience salvation, deal with all the issues of the past, and make us wholesome in the present for the future. Help us to challenge the powers that be and speak truth to authority and confront the demons and offer forgiveness of sins in Jesus' name. And so we can sing, out of my bondage, sorrow and night Jesus I come may God help us to such an end Amen
this morning, you have heard the voice of God, a challenge to be become part of the helping community, to help persons who are wounded, walking wounded, not to criticize, but to offer help, to point people to healing in Jesus, full some healing, physical, mental, societal, environmental, spiritual. And God is somebody God is putting on our hearts that we need to help that person. It might be a relative, it might be a co-worker, a neighbor, a brother or a sister that we know that needs help to overcome dysfunctionality, disruptiveness, or depression. Come, let us pray together so that God will tell us what to do. Or perhaps you are here and we desire healing. We're walking wounded. Jesus is here for us to offer us wholeness, healing, salvation. Come as we sing, out of my bondage, sorrow and night, and say, Jesus, I come. in Christ, we are called to help. As Jesus' servants, we are called to help. There are many examples we are seeing of people who need healing. They are walking wounded. They are hurting. We need to be good listeners. Sometimes just off our shoulder for someone to lean on. Sometimes just being, being there with that person through that difficulty. Yes. Say yes this morning that we are going to be healers in the name of God for those who are walking wounded. Come as we sing the next verse. Out of unrest and arrogant pride, Jesus I come. Jesus I come. Jesus I come. Jesus I come. Into Thy blessed will to abide. Jesus I come to Thee. Help someone who is walking wounded. Out of my soul. Help someone who is hurting. Out of this fair into raptures of Need to be restored. Upward for on wings like a dove. Jesus, 
as I come to thee. Brothers and sisters in Christ, in the name of God and on behalf of God, I make an appeal that you can experience wholeness, salvation, sins forgiven, the hurt can be dealt with. We can be made whole again in Jesus if we are desirous of healing. Perhaps we have had some bad experiences. Perhaps we have made some mistakes. Perhaps we are down and out. Jesus offers us another chance. He came for us to walk in wounded to make us whole again. Come as we sing the final verse. Out of the fear and dread of the tomb, Jesus I come. Jesus I come. Jesus I come. Into the joy and light of thy throne, Jesus I come to Jesus, I come to thee. Let us pray. Almighty God, we acknowledge your compassion, your kindness, your grace, your mercy, and your love. We thank you, God, that you sent your son into this world for us to deal with our wounds, our hurts. We pray now, God, that you'll forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Make us whole again, O oh God, to forget the negative past, to experience forgiveness for sins committed, and to have hope in life. O oh God, grant us your wisdom to be able to help others who are walking wounded, who need your healing. Grant us, O oh God, the strength and wisdom to understand persons' situation and offer them fulsome healing. Lord, you know us by name and nature as we gather at the altar. For some of us, we need healing of the body. Other of us offer the healing of the mind and the soul. Heal us, O oh God. Make us whole again. Make us experience your grace, your pardon, your love, and your mercy. Lord, we bring before your nation, especially the families of those young ladies who are confused, who are angry, who are walking wounded. Lord, we pray for persons with understanding of your word and compassion to minister to them, to help them, to help in the process that leads to healing over time. Lord, we bring before you the other ills of this society, be it economic, environmental, be it spiritual, be it physical. We cast all cares upon you because you care. Lord, as we gather at your altar, do for us more than we deserve. We thank you that burdens are lifted at Calvary. Lift sin and guilt from our lives. Grant us strength to deal with the burdens of this life. 
For we pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen. There are counselors who will pray with you, talk to you further. Upstairs, Luther Gibbs Education Center. But please greet someone before you go. Well, those who are not staying, we invite you to stand as we pronounce a benediction. Those who are staying for the Lord's Supper, please sit. We're going to pronounce a benediction, blessing on you as you go. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord Lift up his countenance and give you his peace. Amen. Please sing as you go.